If you're a parent, teacher, or school leader, and you're sick and tired of the frustration, anger, and unfair treatment of children at high risk in our public schools, then perhaps it's time for all of us to do something about it. In this podcast, Dr. Amitra Berry brings you tips, tools, strategies, and tactics to build successful solutions while touching, moving, and inspiring all of us to transform our schools so that every child thrives. Here's your host, Dr. Berry. Hey there, Equity Warriors. I'm glad you're here. I got to tell you, I am so freaking pissed off this morning. I'm trying not to cuss. So, so what's got my feathers ruffled? Um, I'm trying to enjoy the Astros game. We're shutting out the Phillies. It's the bottom of the eighth. Um, not a problem. Go Strohs. Um, sorry, Philly-based Warriors. I know you are still trying to get that wild card shot, but there's there's a chance. There's a chance. In any event, my husband sends me um, this Instagram post, and it is a video of a slave auction not from the 1700s, not from the 1800s. It's a video of a high school football team in Northern California auctioning off the black members of the football team in a mock slave auction. They posted this video to TikTok and it's been picked up. I'm going to share that on social media. It'll be on my Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, at Almitra Beria. At Almitra Berry. I can't even say my own name. I'm so angry. At Almitra Berry. Hashtag Equity Warrior. Anyhow, let me tell you, this is, this is, it's not something, A, it's not something we should ever see. B, it's not something our children should be doing to one another. But it's worse than that. And part of the reason it ticked me off is that this happened less than a 70 minute, because I do tend to exceed the speed limit from time to time, um, about an hour away from where I grew up in Northern California. This is California, folks. It's not the Deep South. Reason one for me being ticked off, California. Now, we've seen this happen in North Carolina. We've seen it in Texas. Um, We've seen it in places across the Deep South. We would sort of expect for that to happen there. We also... I'm going to guess that many of us wouldn't be surprised to see that happen in a a very racially divided black-white school. So let me help you get a little bit more pissed off about this. It wasn't a black-white thing. And I saw it the minute I looked at the video. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? These were not white kids auctioning off the black kids. They were brown-skinned children auctioning off the black kids. So I had to dig into this a little bit further because, you know, I like to have my my facts straight. And so I went to the National Center for Education Statistics. Where else would I go? And I pulled up the enrollment by race and ethnicity for that high school. It is 41% Latino. My eyes did not deceive me. It is 33% Asian. It's only 18% white and one and a half percent black. So in an upcoming episode, we're gonna dig more deeply into hard history to understand why we should be teaching all of American history warts and all. If you've ever been in one of my sessions where we go into um, sort of the the history of racism and segregation in the United States. And we look at some of the, um, something else I would, I would use in, in, in an appropriate setting in a classroom. Um, Some of the things that happened across this country that A, never make it into the history books, B, we don't like to think about, and C, we really don't want to talk about. We want to pretend it never existed. But I'm going to say that 
everywhere, yes, but in California specifically, because we all tend to think that that California is, well, yeah, it's probably the most progressive state in the nation. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But our children in California, where black children do make up a very small minority of children of color, but it was in that state that Mexicans and Asians were treated almost as harshly as blacks were in the South. There were laws against intermarriage between Mexicans and Asians, not between Mexicans and Asians, but between Mexicans and white people, Asians and white people on the books in California. Businesses, much like in the South, where, you know, black folks had to go in through the back door if they were allowed at all. California, you can find signs. Do this search on the internet for yourself. Don't trust me. There is a long history and plenty of primary source documents that will show that, that businesses had signs posted that said no dogs or Mexicans allowed. They had signs that were posted that said no dogs or Chinese allowed. It was California where the Japanese were first put into internment during World War II. Our Latino, Latinx, forgive me, I don't want to ever offend anyone, and we're still working on which terms we use, and I know it varies from audience to audience. So I tend to use the term Latino if I'm talking male and female. I will try to remember to use Latinx, but then I've also been told by some people they're offended by Latinx. So with the best of intention, our Latino children need to understand the challenges that their ancestors faced in California. And it's not like 15 generations ago. We're talking about the 1960s. We're talking about people that are now maybe in their 70s and 80s. These children's grandparents and great grandparents in that state. So ramifications, what's gonna happen to these kids. Well, the team that was doing the auctioning, um, they forfeited the game. Ultimately, um, they forfeited the season um, because they, you know, once you kick off all the seniors, they didn't have enough kids to play, blah, blah. There's a lot of detail behind that. You can find that on your own. But forfeiting a game or a season is not enough. Banning them from college sports and professional sports, that would be a start. Because if we don't teach our children now that this behavior is not just wrong, it's completely and entirely unacceptable, when are they gonna learn? And when they learn their whole history, how are they going to feel having been the perpetrators of something that was equally evil and malicious? Okay, maybe, maybe. We as adults as well, the teachers and administrators in that school, in that district, need to look at what it is that's happening in the classroom. We can't control the home. We can't control what they see on social media. But we can control what we're teaching in the classroom. We need to teach them now. I'm going to ask those of you warriors who are Latino and Asian who are members of Latino and Asian activism, activist groups, groups within your communities, I'm gonna ask you, please work with your own organizations and help build those bridges and raise awareness. If we, as people of color, and I always thank you, my white allies, because you show up and you work with us. But some of this work we have to do ourselves within our own communities. Black folks with black folks, Asian with Asian, Latino with Latino. We have to do this on our own. And then we have to work with one another. Build bridges, raise awareness among your own people. And always, always, always join me every single week. We're going to keep fighting. Send your questions, topics, requests to AskDrBerry.com. If you've got something that you think is really going to piss me off, get on to AskDrBerry.com. Send it to me there. I'm going to answer those questions. I'm going to bring you those topics, and I'm going to bring you experts to help address those topics. 
Don't worry about things we cannot change. Let's change all the things we can no longer accept. I'll see you next time. That's it for today's episode of the 3E Podcast. Head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week that posts a review on iTunes will win a chance in a grand prize drawing to win a $25,000 value private VIP day with Dr. Barry herself. Be sure to head over to 3epodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Dr. Barry's gift. Then join us on the next episode.